Well, good afternoon again uh, as we do our midweek broadcast. Just uh, want to encourage you and your families. Uh, if you've been watching the news, uh, I have to admit I've been watching more of it than I ever care to, and I'm looking forward to a day when I can kind of go back and not watch as much. But it looks like all of those uh, curves that are about flattening and flattening and that we are coming to the other side of it. So I truly believe that by May, I don't know if it's going to be the first of May or just within the first two weeks of May, but I believe we're going to be able to come back together and uh, start meeting in church. So I look so forward to that. I've missed having each one of you here. I've tried to call you. And just a reminder, if you get a call from an Arizona number, 520, that is probably your pastor calling you, not someone trying to sell you insurance or something else. And I'm just calling to see how you're doing and being able to wish you a happy Easter, which I think is so important. Well, again, I just want to encourage you as we're at home, um, enjoy your time with your family. And for those of you that are in the health care industry, and this hasn't been a time off, but it's been... 12-hour shifts. God bless you. And we're praying for you and hoping that uh, you're doing well also. But uh, again, just want to encourage you. And I'm going to read to you today through uh, the second letter of Corinthians from the first chapter. I'll be reading verses um, 3 through 7. So as a word of encouragement, let us go to the scriptures and see what Paul has written. It says, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation, who consoles us all in our affliction, so that we may be able to console those who are in any affliction, with consolation with which we ourselves were consoled by God. For just as the sufferings of Christ are abundant for us, so also the consolation is abundant through Christ. If we are being afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation. If we are being consoled, it is for your consolation, which you experience when you patiently endure the same sufferings that we also suffer. Our hope is for you, it is unshaken, for we know that as you share in our sufferings, so you also share in our consolation. Basically, while we are at home, while we are separated, this letter was to the Corinthians from Paul, but it's to all Christians. We do suffer. We do have times when we are alone, we are isolated, but in our isolation, in our aloneness, we are not completely alone, for Christ is with us. He went through all his sufferings, that is, that is the promise of Easter. Yes, he was crucified for us, but he was also raised for us. And in doing so, he gives us the ultimate consolation, so we are never alone, we are never separated from the Father, but through Christ Jesus, we are brought together. And so, each in our own homes, each in our own times, we are together in Christ. And here in the future, we'll be together again for our Lord. This is a wonderful thing, and I just want to encourage you. Um, hopefully, during this time, you've used it to, I don't know, do more puzzles, spend more time with your family, call people, whatever it is that you have used this time for, let us praise God for that pause. Let us also praise Him that He will bring us back together. So let us go to Him now in prayer. Father God, I give you thanks and praise for this day as we, your church, we are scattered throughout Trenton in the, the local area, but we are not scattered because you bring us together. You, as a shepherd, bring sheep back into the fold. You bring each of us into your fold. And so we praise you and we give you thanksgiving. And we just ask, Lord, that you would help us to use this time to go closer to you and build bonds with one another. We pray this in all things in Christ Jesus' name, our Lord and Savior, our risen Savior, during this Easter season. Amen and amen. God bless you all. Take care.